Is it really worth upgrading your old gas trimmer to the new lithium ion battery trimmer? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing my 12 year old Echo SRM230 gas powered trimmer to this new DeWalt 60 volt trimmer. First, we're gonna compare the string. How long does it take to replace it? How much can it hold and what's the cut width? Then we'll compare the weight, length, and balance of each one. Then we're gonna compare the max runtime of each trimmer. Then we'll compare the recharge versus refuel time, how easily each unit jams, noise, vibration, and a couple of other things. All right, well, let's get the show started. So I've got the recommended string for each trimmer. The Echo takes 95 thousandths and the DeWalt takes 80 thousandths. Both of these units have a speed feed bump head on it. Now, originally, the Echo came with a different style head unit on it, so I highly recommend that you get the bump style quick feed head. Uh, it just makes life so much easier as far as refill time. I suspect that this test is gonna be virtually identical. However, I do, I am curious how much string each one can hold. They both claim to hold around 20 feet, so we're gonna check that. First, I'm gonna get rid of the string that's already in these, which on both of these quick feeds head, there's just little tabs here that you can pop open. The whole thing will come out, and you can just empty it out. So we're gonna clip both of these to the door here, measure out 25 feet, and then uh, wind up as much of that as we can, and that's how we'll know how much they hold. Okay, there's 25. So winding these up is incredibly easy. You'll see a hole here and a hole on the other side. You just rotate this like that until you can see a hole straight through. Or this one actually has two lines right there. That one does not. So I line these up. Sometimes the line's a little too curly for it. There we go. And you pull it till it's even on both sides. Double check that we're even, which we're not. So we'll even that back out. There we go. Now we're even. Now this is the awesome part. You don't have to get tangled up at all. Well, that definitely took all 25 feet. So we're good there. We know that one can handle it. I don't think this one can take 25 feet. And you gotta remember the, the 80 thou is much thinner line than the 95. Do the same thing. All right, the hole's already lined up. Pull it through till it's even. And just do the same thing. This one's already full. All right, so we put 25 feet in. Let's see how much uh, we cut off. Eight foot, five inches. So 25 minus eight and a half feet, 17 feet approximately is what fit in there. All right, now let's measure our cut width. The DeWalt claims a 15 inch cut width. So from our trim line or line trimmer to the center of the head should be, yep, seven and a half inches. That's 15 inches for it. The Echo, now <laughs> it claims 17 inches, but this is not a factory setup. This has been changed and the bump head has been changed. Not that the bump head would affect that, but I'm getting eight and a half almost to the center. So that would be 17 inches. So yeah, the Echo has a, a wider cut path. All right, now let's compare the overall length of each. The DeWalt is coming in right around just over 70 inches, 70 and a quarter inches. The Echo is around 71 inches. Now let's measure from the trigger to the bump head. I'll go from the middle of the trigger to the center of the bump head is approximately 52 and a half inches. Center of the trigger, center of the bump head is about 51 inches. So the Echo is definitely longer. And just as a comparison, if I hold the DeWalt, you can see the bump head is a little bit at an angle, unless I'm slouched a little bit, but standing straight up, a little bit of an angle there. I'm about six foot tall. The Echo, same thing. I'd say it's a little bit flatter. And I feel like I'm holding a little bit higher up on the Echo than I am the DeWalt. This definitely feels a little more comfortable as far as reach, levelness. You know, if you're just trying to cut level, this one is a little more level. All right, now let's check weight and balance. This has got the battery on it, 13.66. 13.66 balances just behind the, the handle. The Echo, I just topped off the tank, 13.56. So pretty comparable in weight and balance. And just real quick, so yeah, that's, that's not bad. This one's a little more tippy, it feels like. 
Still pretty close though. So if you're holding here and here versus here and here, weight distribution is very, very close. All right, so now we're onto the run test. The DeWalt is freshly off the charger, not a single trigger pull on it. The Echo has a full tank. And rather than trying to burn up all full tank of gas, I'm gonna empty it out, measure it, put a third of that back in the tank, and then multiply my results by, by three. That way I don't have to spend you know, an hour plus out there if that's how long it lasts. Exactly two cups, got lucky there. And I'll probably throw a little splash extra in it for warm up time. So two and about a quarter cup. So two and a quarter cups looks like it's 18 ounces. 18 divided by three is six. So we'll put six ounces back in it. I'm just double checking right quick. The uh, published fuel capacity for the Echo is 19.1 ounces. So I calculated 18 is what I poured out plus a little bit that's in the, the fuel line. So yeah, I think our, our calculation should be right on. So I got just over six ounces poured back in. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Start the clock. Just making sure I started the camera. Doggy. I think the DeWalt's gonna win the vibration test. Here we go, on high, full throttle till she stops. First time I've pushed this thing this far. It just sounds slower too. Okay, it basically can't cut anymore. So we'll let it sit for just a minute, and then I'll try a little bit more just to see what it can do. I mean, it's showing one bar. It might just be really hot too, which I'm sure it is. Let's check the temperature right quick. It's actually not that bad. So overall, I mean, the battery doesn't feel super hot and it's only about 70 degrees out today the motor doesn't feel hot at all that doesn't gearbox it's warm not super hot did all right all right let's see if the dewalt revived a little after just five minutes and it's still at one bar let's see if it sounds any better a little bit let's try it nope Nope, she's done. So as you can see, the DeWall got almost three down and backs. The Echo on a third of a tank of gas had four full down and backs and they were longer stretches. So one tank in the DeWalt, or I'm sorry, one tank in the Echo is a lot more time running than the DeWalt. We'll talk more about that inside. So approximately 28 feet by 133. About 20 feet, 113. So something else I wanna point out is the condition of these cut blades here. So these blades of grass, the ones that are cut, this is from the Echo Trimmer line. They do look a little bit torn, but they also look a little bit cut. Okay, so we got DeWalt on the right, Echo on the left. The Echo trimmer line, to me anyway, seems like it did a better job at actually cutting. And it looks like the DeWalt did a lot more ripping. You can see the long strands there, all split. And just looking at the rest of them, they all kind of look that way. But that's pretty subjective there. All right, so obviously this test there's going to be a clear winner and it's already a clear winner. So we'll hit the stopwatch right now. Plug this guy in and this is a standard DCB 115 
charger. It's the one that comes with almost every single DeWalt battery. Well, that's going. Go ahead and get a secondary timer on the camera to mark down the 30 seconds it takes to refuel. Hopefully I can do it without spilling. All right, we'll be back when the uh, DeWalt's done charging. We're at 43 minutes right now, still charging. I'm assuming not much longer. Hour and 23 minutes, still charging. All right, so we're at an hour and 55 minutes. This is taking a lot longer than I expected. Uh, I got somebody showed up to check out something I'm selling, so I'm probably going to miss when it actually finishes. All right, so we're at two hours and 45 minutes. Somewhere while I was out trying to sell a truck, this thing finished up. So I'll split the difference and we'll go from there. So I figured I'd take a quick second here to show you the differences in the trimmer line. Now this DeWalt stuff, it's very rounded. All right, this is a used end right here. You can see how it's the black is mostly gone. This section here is not used a whole lot. And it's very round. So it would tend to rip more unless it was going really fast. The Echo, here's a, a less used edge of it, but the Echo has little sharp edges throughout. And here's a, a brand new chunk right here. See those sharp edges on there? Now, once they get worn in a little bit, like that's a used end right there that I just clipped off of it. And you can see it's starting to round off, but it's still got some flats on it. And personally, I think these cut better. And this Rhino Tough stuff, and there's all sorts of different brands, but it's, it's very similar. It's got sharp edges that I personally think seems to cut the grass rather than rip the grass. There's triangular shapes. This one's actually triangular shaped versus the Echo, which is more like four-sided with edges on it. But there's all sorts of different brands. They have all sorts of different gimmicks to it. So, all right, so for the next test, we're gonna test the torque. And I tried using this digital torque meter and it just didn't register. Uh, this is the DeWalt right now. This is a oil filter uh, socket, wrench, whatever you want to call it, adapter. Happens to fit on here perfectly. And then it catches on these little flanges here. And both the DeWalt and the Echo spin left hand. So it's actually perfect for this. That was low. Here's high. All right, Echo is warmed up. Here we go. All right, we'll be checking that out on the footage. All right, here's RPM. This is high. So 5,800 and high. 4,660 and low. Now we'll check the decibels. There's low, high. And I will check the RPM of the Echo. All right, now we'll check the decibels of the Echo. Powerhead. All right, here's our last two tests. We're gonna see how easily they jam with this tall stuff, tall stringy weeds. And then after just a few minutes of that, we'll check a temperature on the, the motorhead, the battery for the DeWalt, and the drive end. not even jammed. I'd say the uh, Echo did pretty good. Not a single piece stuck in there. Let's try the, uh, the DeWalt. Already jammed up. Look at that. A lot of junk still smashed in there. And just to show you that's not a fluke, because I've been messing with this, this thing for a while now. I mean, look how gummed up that is. I'll go back to that exact same spot with the Echo. And look how short that string is already.
couple pieces stuck in there. Nothing crazy, still works just fine. I'll do one more shot with the uh, DeWalt and I'll show you what I'm talking about, why this is happening. Yep, same thing. So let me show you the difference here. This did not happen a single time with the Echo. And yeah, it took a little bit longer that second time with the DeWalt. This is the difference. See this huge gap right here? Stuff can get caught and flung loose. This one has an itty bitty little gap right there that look, that stuff gets caught in there. See that? It's maybe, you know, just under a quarter inch thickness. This one doesn't have any of that. It's just one big wide open piece. See the difference? So this one, stuff gets jammed in there a lot. And then same thing down here, up under here. Whereas this one doesn't have anything there restricting it. All right, so we've run them both for a few minutes. Kind of worked them hard. The head on this unit, the drive end on this unit is 105 degrees. Sorry, 100 degrees, 0.5. Motor end, we'll start with the battery. 75, 76, 72. The motor itself, 78, 79, 80. Seems to be the hottest part. Yeah, just over 80 degrees. That was only a couple minutes. And it's not very hot here today. Echo, 1025, a couple degrees warmer, 103, 1035. Now the motor part, and the motor itself, obviously that's gonna be a lot warmer. 200, 204, 110, 270, straight on the metal exhaust. Uh, anywhere that might touch you, so when you're operating it, right in here, so let's check that. The section right there, that is kind of warm. 139, 140. At plastics, 140, and I will tell you, it does hit you right there. A little bit every now and then. You know, it's not crazy. It's not gonna like burn your skin right off, but it's not comfortable. Uh, the exhaust itself does occasionally swirl around in here, so that's something to think about. Okay, back in the shop, there's only one last little thing I wanna check before we do the wrap up. And that's how far the back of the unit is from where my hand sits. Yeah, about 12 inches. And it's 12 and a half, just a smidge longer. That was something I could feel. And you know, that's probably why it's a little, little more angled when, it's, uh, when you're trying to cut. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers, evaluate it. You can make your own decision on what you think is best for you. Uh, personally, uh, I kind of like them both, you know, so uh, I can see advantages and disadvantages of each. Uh, but let's just go through it real quick. All right, so let's talk about the big one first. Runtime and square footage covered by a single charge or tank of gas. The, the gas trimmer absolutely dominated. It's not even close. The, uh, the gas trimmer on a third of a tank went for 23 and a half minutes. So total time on a full tank would be about 70 minutes, 70 and a half minutes. And uh, compared to the, the dual or the battery, now that's a, a nine amp flex hour battery. So we'll talk about that in just a quick second. Uh, but the, the battery went for 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Total run time from start to finish, full charge. Now, like I said, nine amp hour battery, they do make a 12 and a 15 amp hour battery. I'm not entirely sure that that would be a linear uh, equation to run time. Uh, would you get that exact percentage more run time? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe somebody else out there can tell us run time on other equipment. Uh, anyway, so huge, huge difference. And when you look at the area coverage, the, uh, the battery operated did an area of 20 foot by 113 feet, that's 2,200 square feet of coverage versus the gas trimmer, which went 28 feet by 133 feet, which is 3,700 square feet coverage with only a third of a tank. So we multiply that times three and we get over 11,000 square feet. So uh, the math there works out to about five times the coverage with the gas trimmer and one full tank of gas. And then if you think about that even further, we'll talk about recharge time versus refuel time. You saw refuel only took 30 seconds, you know, call it a minute, whatever. And the recharge time, uh, it really sucks. I had somebody just show up. I have a truck for sale and they just showed up. So I, it was unplanned. So I ended up missing the exact uh, time that the battery took to charge. 
uh, but it was somewhere in the ballpark of two to two and a half hours. Uh, that's the, again the nine amp hour battery. Now if you had two batteries, you could just swap one out back and forth. And uh, we'll talk about whether or not this is really important to you uh, here in a second as well. Uh, for max speed, RPM, no load, uh, the DeWalt on high uh, got 5,800 RPM and low it went 4,660 ballpark and the uh, gas trimmer was about 5,800. So high RPM, they're both the same. Uh, with that said, the trimmer head on the, the, the gas trimmer, it's probably got more weight in it and the string is sticking out further. So that's a little bit more momentum and inertia. But I will say that the DeWalt did not slow down like the gas trimmer. So the battery didn't slow down like the gas trimmer did when I hit heavy uh, media, if you will, whether it's weeds, grass, doesn't matter, fence post. Uh, all right, so length, width, height, uh, balance, all of that is very, very close. I'd call that a wash across the board. One of the big things for me is the vibration. The gas trimmer, now mine is older, all right? It's much older and it's got a lot of use on it, so it's probably rattled loose quite a bit. Uh, but my hands were tingling really bad after using the DeWalt, or using the Echo, the gas trimmer, for what was it, 25, almost 25 minutes. Whereas the battery powered trimmer, Super smooth, no vibration, really nice, really nice to use. So the battery definitely wins there. So something that uh, I've been dealing with with this Echo Trimmer forever, and now I'm dealing with the same thing, is crap flying up in my face. And I didn't really get any footage of this, uh, but since I'm goofy foot, I hold the, the tool you know, with the handle in my left hand and the trigger in my right hand, and then the left spinning head on it kicks stuff up. Now, if I held it uh, the other direction, which I'm pretty sure most people use, but I'm not sure to tell you the truth. This is totally subjective. If I was to hold it the other way, uh, backwards from how I normally hold it, that left spinning trimmer head would be spitting stuff out in front of me. And when I hold it this way, it's kind of throwing it towards me. And it, both of these affected me about the same way for that. All right, so cost. This guy, the, the gas trimmer, brand new right now, is anywhere from 270 to 300 bucks, uh, depending on where you shop for it. And the DeWalt is right around the same cost. So you're looking at, uh, without a battery, it's only about 230. With the battery, it's about 330. And yes, the batteries are around 150 to 200 dollars, uh, depending again where you get them. Uh, I think Amazon has them on sale right now for 180, so they're pretty expensive. If you get the bigger batteries, that's going to cost more. So cost-wise, they're pretty much the same. Another benefit of this particular DeWalt compared to this particular Echo is the fact that the DeWalt splits in half. Now I have a Ryobi that has the the expand it function, so you can pop this guy off of here just by loosening this up. We'll go ahead and do it right quick, and then there's just a little quick release button, and boom. Now, if you've got an edger attachment or a pole saw attachment or whatever else they make, you can use your DeWalt for that, whereas the professional grade Echo gas trimmer, you can't do that. But like I said, they do make other gas trimmers with that function, and I've been using a Ryobi with the pole saw on it for over 10 years now, and it is really handy. As far as noise go, uh, they're close. Uh, the, the trimmer head on both, the, the Echo is actually slightly quieter, it came in at, uh, the Echo came in at 90 on the trimmer head itself, whereas the uh, DeWalt came in at 92 decibels. Uh, however, the power head on the Echo is louder at like about 93 decibels. Pretty close either way. Uh, but I will say the Echo is a little more annoying and I generally wear earplugs when I'm using it, whereas the DeWalt I haven't been. So take that for what it's worth. All right, we saw the jamming issue with this DeWalt power head on here, or not the power head, the um, bump head, and it's just a poor design in my opinion. Usually you're not, at least usually I'm not, dealing with monster tall weeds that I'm trimming. I'm usually trimming the grass around the yard, you know, around trees and rocks and stuff that I can't mow next to, and that's honestly what most people use it for. So probably a wash there leaning slightly towards the Echo just because it rarely ever gets clogged. We did take a, a quick look at the heat and the temperatures put off by both. Total wash there. Uh, obviously the DeWalt run a little bit cooler, 
but uh, it doesn't have a, an actual internal combustion engine. Uh, I've never actually had an issue with heat, you know, burning me or anything, or even being uncomfortable. Every now and then, some of the exhaust from the, the, the gas trimmer will flow around you a little bit, and it's a little bit annoying, but it's hardly even noticeable. All right, so for our torque test that we had that torque wrench put in the vise, um, I'm not entirely sure I believe that test result. The, uh, the DeWalt came in around 40 inch pounds. The, the gas came in around 10 inch pounds. I don't necessarily believe it's that big of a difference. You know, I did say when I'm up and, you know, cutting in the field or even around the yard, I've noticed that the, the battery operated just doesn't slow down like the gas does, but at the same time, the gas is spinning a little bit longer string. Uh, so I don't know. I know electric motors are really strong compared to gas, or, uh, yeah, gas motors. It could be that much of a difference. So, you know, you'll have to make up your own mind on that. When, when you saw me up in the field, that the battery operated one basically doesn't slow down no matter how fast you go, but you don't know, it's too hard to see what the strings are doing. It's not necessarily cutting faster. And I'm sure if we actually did the uh, math on the square footage per the amount of time we spent, the gas trimmer definitely cut more in the same amount of time. So just take that for what it's worth. And uh, probably the last thing I'll mention here as far as differences between the two is environmental. Obviously a two stroke gas engine is worse for the environment as far as its emissions, However, I know making lithium ion batteries is not exactly environmentally friendly. And I know a lot of people might disagree with that, but if you look into the, the mining process of the minerals or materials required to make batteries, then the transportation overseas and back, the plastics involved, the non-biodegradable stuff in it, uh, you add it all up and lithium ion batteries, uh, batteries in general, uh, they're not exactly environmentally friendly either. And gasoline has a much, much, much greater energy per volume uh, number, if you will, than a battery. So just keep that in mind. People talk about cars the same way, electric cars. Electric, uh, electric car batteries, you talk about a carbon footprint that you can't get back. Uh, it would, you'd have to drive that car for probably 20 years to erase the carbon footprint of somebody like me driving a 95 Honda Accord for 15 years. You can't touch my carbon footprint. You just can't. So batteries are great, but they just don't hold the energy that gasoline does. All right, so with all of that said, what would be my preference? Honestly, again, I like them both. You know, I, I love the, the reach and the professional grade of the gas trimmer. I like knowing I don't have to stop and recharge. Uh, but honestly, you know, my yard is pretty big and I can use that DeWalt trimmer and do the whole thing. It takes about 30 minutes. Something I didn't mention in, throughout the video so far is that a huge advantage of the battery style is that when you're done and, you know, say you go around a tree and you're walking over to the next tree, you're not using any battery power during that time. So I've spent more than 30 minutes straight trimming around everything in my yard before I mow and I still have two bars left on the battery when I'm done after 30 minutes. Where wide open test, we only made it 18 and a half minutes and boom, the battery was dead, right? That's not normally how you're using these trimmers. You, you hit the trigger, you know, clean up around something and then you let the trigger go, walk to the next thing, you know, go along a fence, do the same thing. So honestly, the electric trimmer or the, the battery powered trimmer would be great for most people in most circumstances. But is it really worth upgrading? Uh, I don't think so, not for that cost. Now, if you get a cheaper one, maybe. Uh, even then, I, I would tend to disagree. I don't think it would quite be worth it unless you just really, really want one. Uh, another thing to think about, you know, I'm already invested in DeWalt and that's actually why I got the DeWalt. I found it on clearance and it came with the nine, and a, uh, nine amp hour battery. So if you're already invested in uh, Milwaukee or DeWalt or Ryobi or any of the big brands or the Ego, I think that's what it's called. Anyhow, if you're already invested in those and you happen to find one on clearance, it certainly wouldn't hurt to add it to your arsenal of yard tools. And plus you get the battery that you can use on other tools. So now I can use this on a little chainsaw I got, the leaf blower, uh, even the 20 volt tools can take the 60 flex volt. Well, I hope that helps everybody kind of make a decision. I know we're a little wishy-washy here and there, but there is definitely some clear differences, clear advantages of each. 
Uh, so you'll just have to make up your mind on what works best for you. Hey, thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out the video. Please take a quick second to hit them like and subscribe buttons. If you got any suggestions for future videos or comments on this video, please throw that down in the comment section and we will see you all on the next video.